Alright, okay. Um, my name is Shani Nottingham, but I have a little art business called Rare Pair. So my talk tonight is about kind of my journey and how I got to this point in time. Okay, uh, once upon a time, and I'm a teacher, so I have a clipboard with me. <laughs> professional. Okay, once upon a time, I completed a Bachelor of Arts Visual Arts, majoring in Photography and minor in Illustration. Um, in Newcastle where I was born. After that I travelled and lived overseas for a few years with my lovely fiancé. Upon our arrival back in Australia though, we quite unexpectedly and rapidly found ourselves in the central west of New South Wales, um, which was a rather huge change from living in Europe. Um, after a year of coming to grips with this kind of seismic shift and realising that I had to do something because my brain was turning to mush, I enrolled in a teaching degree by distance education, got married, fell pregnant, began breeding. <laughs> um, I was continuing to take lots of photos, including working part-time as a photographer for the local paper. Um, I set up my own darkroom. I was entering local exhibitions and shows, but really I didn't really know what I was doing, and my creativity was just something that I was dabbling around with. Um, in a bid to stay creative, I did go to a local art group. They were very friendly and very welcoming, but I was the youngest by quite a few several decades. Um, and it soon became apparent that my desire to paint in bright colours and do so spontaneously was an anathema to them. <laughs> they did lovely things, but they weren't my type of things. There was a lot of sheep, trees and shacks. <laughs> um, you know what I mean. I did things that made them scratch their heads and ask questions and raise their eyebrows and say things like, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, while looking at each other. Probably the funniest thing that ever happened is one day I forgot my lunch and a lady offered me a sandwich. And I said, no, I'm right, thank you. And she said, oh, come on, Dale, it's lovely. It's fresh tongue. My husband killed the sheep and I cured it. And I could see this big, chunky pink thing on this sandwich and I said, I'm sorry. And they all just went, <gasps> <laughs> silence, silence, <laughs> and looked at me. And I should say, Slim Dusty was on the radio and there was a kangaroo jumping around as well. And I do remember sitting there thinking, I'm in a David Lynch film, this is just so <laughs> <laughs> um, Gradually, the time and the urge to create became less visceral and life took over. The threads of art still pulled and puckered me up at the seams, reminding me that it was still there. But I began to embrace gardening, I bred a bit more, I was still studying, um, then I began teaching, I was still doing the odd exhibition, painting murals at my kids' school, still dabbling around the edges of creativity. My home became a major creative outlet <laughs> and my op shopping just went wild. <laughs> um, <coughs> I did win some art awards, local art awards, photography awards, some trophies including uh, novice Flower Arrangement of the Year at the Cara Show. <laughs> I've got sash and everything. <laughs> um, I had my images chosen for a local calendar and I did try to keep my fingers in a very lukewarm creative pie. <laughs> um, but the strength of the creative undercurrent sometimes caught me out and pulled me down though. And I would end up having minor meltdowns and panic about needing to paint and draw. Especially as my children got older and I realised that a huge part of me was actually completely unfulfilled. Fast forward 2012. A dear friend had begun a cake venture <coughs> and decided to have a stall at a local farmer's markets. She conned me into having a market too to keep her company. Um, an idea began to grow, a seed of an idea. Okay. I thought, wow, I could be a brand and actually do all sorts of things. So the name Rare Pear came into my head and um, I was really excited about doing my first market, but then my whole family came down with major gastro. <laughs> the amount of toilet paper was ridiculous. For weeks we had a tag team of illness that wiped us out. In tears, with no energy, and sapped from loss of fluid and tiredness, I rang my friend and pulled out of the market. Cue a few months later, the idea had, of course had faded, until I sat down with a cuppa and read a little article in the Sunday <coughs> paper lift out about a lovely lady called Jacqueline Fink, an extreme knitter. She's got, uh, they're about this long, the knitting needles, and this wide, they're huge. Um, it was about her, her creative journey. She's got a business called Little Dandelion. 
Okay, in this article, the interviewer asked her what was the most important thing that she'd learnt. And she said, you just have to start. Well, it hit me in the heart, in my solar plexus, the gut and my brain. I was shaking and crying. And then she said she was so proud of the example that had set for her children, that being a creative had inspired her kids too and was such a great role model. I got up from the table, sat down at the computer, which I was terrified of still at that time, and I started a Facebook page. <laughs> um, and I announced Repair to the World. I had no idea what it was going to be or what I was doing, but I figured if I made it public, I'd have to do something. And eventually it has. Rare Pair became Rare Pair Studio and has become an integral part of my life. It has sustained me through a personal crisis and given me the impetus to push where I thought I never would. And now I paint and draw and photograph constantly. The floodgates have opened and it's fantastic. I'm still finding out exactly what I'm doing and still have lots of questions, but as scary as it is, it's better than doing nothing. Um, I continue to be terrified a lot of the time. Um, I'm creative, definitely, but business and technology are completely new to me. Okay, Approaching galleries and retailers and places to exhibit my stuff is terrifying. But I'm taking little steps and I'm getting there. Um, one of the things that's changed is after the years of taking the piss out of social media and thinking people who are on Facebook were losers. Um, I am now completely addicted to Instagram. And um, through social media, um, they've become a vast network of like-minded souls and they're very, very supportive. I've even met some of them. I've got new customers and lots of opportunities and it's going really well. And that's the end.